Steph and Graham on behalf of the team and the, and the new personnel. How similar different do you see the workload being next season? For Steph and Graham? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's tough to tough to say before we even get on the floor, you know, sure. but I mean I'm not not throwing them out there for forty minutes a night, I know that. So are you, are you gonna going in on international trips here with USA across your chest? Everything's going on. Does that have an extra weight? Uh, yeah, I, I think um, I'm, I'm proud uh, to um, represent my country and do it in a with this group in a really positive, classy way. I watched the women's World Cup team win the win the, the, uh, the World Cup, and, and um, it was inspiring. And to me, that's what sports are about. You know, it's the competition and the unity and um, bringing, bringing out this great spirit and energy amongst the fans, and so I think we have a chance to do something that's very positive and unifying, and that's our goal. Have you talked to you? Yeah, yeah, we've talked um, a couple times, and we'll we'll connect again probably next week when we get to LA uh, with the team. And um, I'm excited to coach him. You know, he's a great, great young talent. And, I think he's going to fit right in with our group, and we're going to need him desperately. Without Clay, especially, we need D'Angelo's scoring, and, and it's up to us as a staff to figure out, you know, how best to, to use him and to, to shape the team, shape the offense, and we'll figure it out. And is he considered at any point? Actually, I don't know. That's not my um, my area. I just show up and coach who's here. So. Um, that's been somebody else's jurisdiction. All right, guys. Your off season, I guess, up until this point, as far as any time you've been able to get away yeah. and get yeah, it back. I mean, it's been, I don't know, what's it been, six weeks since the finals? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I've been taking a couple trips with my wife and spent some time in San Diego, uh, where we live in the off season. And, uh, just kind of gotten away. Went to England for my nephew's wedding. Oh, nice. Um, so, um, it's been fun, and now it's, this is great. I mean, you know, this is such a different challenge, and uh, so I'm excited to be part of this operation, to coach with with Bob and with the staff, and to take on this challenge with all these guys. It's really fun. Anything in particular you're looking forward to the most with work with Pop or just being part of the staff in general? Well, I think just learning from, from him. You know, I, I played for him for four years, and it's different when you play for someone versus uh, work with him as a coach because you get a different perspective of the work behind the scenes, you know, the plan, the So, so I'm, I'm looking to learn. I'm looking to grow as a coach. Um, and it's fun to, to be, be part of that process. When you've talked to, in the past season and, and since then of the whole idea of emulating what the Spurs have done long term, I mean, do you think there's anything in particular you can learn even now as far as how to go about doing that? Well, it may be a pipe dream, yeah. honestly. I mean, it's, you know, when you look at what they've done, they've made the playoffs for 20 consecutive years. I think we have 13 years to go to match that. <laughs> uh, they were very unique in that uh, you know, they had a, a David Robinson, Tim Duncan bridge that led to uh, Manu Ginobili and Kawhi Leonard. So they, they've, they've had such an incredible run. The whole league tries to emulate the Spurs. We do too. I've taken a lot of things uh, from my time in San Antonio. Brought those things to to Golden State. Um, you know, you just want to sustain sustain your success and, and keep the momentum going forward. And um, this year will be our biggest challenge yet because we lost so many key guys. So this will be a, a really interesting season for us. Um, with the injury to play, number of new guys, the loss of so many key guys. Uh, Got a lot of work ahead, but uh, it's, a, it's a fun challenge, too. Yeah, I mean, kind of the expectations that you have for this team. Obviously. It's so different from the last few years where we could, you know, kind of, barring disaster, we, we knew we were going to win 
whole lot of games. You know, it was more about preparing for the playoffs and whether we won you know, 57 games or 65 games uh, didn't really matter that much. It was, but what a luxury to even say that, you know. Uh, now with, with all the, the new additions uh, and the losses that we've had, it's really about establishing who we are as a team. We don't know who we are. We've known who we were the last five years. Um, so this is a brand new challenge and the, the first part of the season, training camp, and then the you know, first month or two will be critical in terms of establishing our identity as a team. I mean, I mean, given all those kind of, what are, what are your initial thoughts of like where you guys go from offsetting the, the, the scoring void obviously with Kevin and Clay's initial absence as well as the leadership vacuum with Andre and Sean? Well, uh, you, you know, we may have to play a little differently. We'll look at uh, different things as we go. We still want to push the pace and play fast and, and move the ball, but uh, we've got a different group. Uh, so we'll account for that and uh, we'll adjust to that. Uh, I'm confident we'll score points. And, you know, we've, we've added some guys who can put the ball in the basket. The bigger concern is defensively because what we've lost is uh, really our ability to switch at multiple positions and uh, do so with size and aggression. You know, when you think about losing Andre, Sean Livingston, Kevin, Clay, uh, you know, that's those are all the interchangeable guys, or many of the interchangeable guys we've featured over the years. So uh, we'll have to rethink what we're doing defensively and uh, mix and match. And again, it's uh, it's kind of uh, back to the drawing board, and, and in some ways, that's uh, that's a lot of fun. It's exciting. What do you make of the amount of guys on Team USA? Uh, it's, I don't blame them. You know, they, this uh, this tournament that we're playing in in China goes till September 14th, I guess, mid-September. Training camps start two weeks after that. So I don't blame anybody for not wanting to come. Um, I, I, I'm excited about the guys who are here. You know, day one of practice, the energy was incredible in here. We got a lot of great young players who are trying to establish themselves, uh, maybe take that next step, you know, from being really good players um, to you know, all-star players or even beyond. Um, and to be part of that process, try to help them get there and do so in the manner of uh, trying to win a championship uh, for your country. That's exciting. So it's a lot of change you think this means to Well, he loves the challenge, you know, he's been coaching in the NBA for so long, uh, but this is an entirely different challenge and opportunity, and I know how proud he is to uh, coach for his country and to represent his country, uh, but from a basketball perspective, it's a completely different deal than uh, preparing the Spurs for the 22nd time or however many years he's coached. So. Uh, I think he's invigorated. I think he is uh, really excited about what's ahead. Oh, of course, yeah. Pop's one of the great teachers uh, I've ever been around. Uh, and there's a lot to learn because the rules are different in, in FIBA. And, uh, you know, this, is, this all happens in about six weeks. So we've got to get to know the rules right away, and, and uh, Pops, he's not going to leave any stone unturned, I know that. In terms of dinners, dinners this week, is he, is he taking care of all those just like when you were players? In terms of what? Dinners? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, uh, I've eaten too much the last few nights. It's all, It's been like three nights, and we've already eaten way too much food, so it's, this is going to be a problem. Aside from good food, Pop, and the staff, what's he, what's he prioritized this week? Aside from from good food and wine, food I know those are important as well too. What what things do you prioritize off the camp here? Preparation. His preparation is uh, is so detail oriented. So everything has been meticulously planned uh, leading up to today. We've had coaches meetings uh, the last couple of days. We met last month in San Antonio. So everything has been tuned and, and dialed, and uh, he still got it. I mean, Bob is just an incredible coach and, uh, and a 
amazing teacher and, and um, organizer and leader. So um, it's fun to be part of. It. How would you say having the unique experience of playing for uh, Phil Jackson, one of the greatest coaches, winning one of his coaches of all time, and then obviously Pop? How would you say they're similar or maybe different in their coaches' styles? Um, they're very, very similar in that they're incredible teachers and very unique to their own personalities, their own uh, life experience. They're very uh, authentic. And, uh, and they've taken those life experiences and they've really uh, used them to, uh, to shape their teams and to shape their cultures that they've instilled in their team, their respective teams. But they're very different in the way that they go about this. Those kind of hammocks. So it's, uh, you know, what a lucky person I am to be able to have played for both of them. Steve, uh, Draymond's value is obvious. Uh, the financial ramifications of maybe waiting another year. Did you see the extension coming with Draymond? Yeah, I mean, we've yeah. talked about it. We talked about it before last season. And, you know, so I've been um, talking to Bob about it and, uh, and, and Draymond. And, uh, thrilled for him. I mean, nobody deserves it more. Uh, and so I'm, I'm just excited that we've got Draymond, Steph, Clay, uh, you know, the guys who have, uh, you know, been the core of this thing, uh, at the center of it, along with, with Andre and you know, Sean Livingston and Kevin, who have all departed. But, the, you know, the three, the three guys who three of the, of the main guys who've been here since the beginning, to have them locked up uh, so that we can transition to the next era is really critical. So I'm thrilled that Draymond's back on the You sense the organizations on the current line play almost like how the Spurs will Tim, Manu, and Tony are always trying to keep them and then just build around them? Well, I think you have to do that yeah. if, you, uh, if you have special players uh, who not only are great players, talented players, but who are uh, foundational pieces, but people who you, who you can build around, you set a culture, you establish a mindset. And um, so this summer was painful in many ways, losing the guys that we did, um, but reassuring in the sense that we brought back uh, you know, some, some key guys who are going to help us kind of get, get to that next next era, whatever that looks like. Steve, going to pick out this summer, are you surprised that Draymond extended now? Uh, no, no, I mean, I think, uh, I think every player sort of faces uh, these moments where they've got to decide, you know, am I going to mitigate risk and sign something now uh, or play it out? And uh, that's up to them. Obviously, everyone goes about it differently. Uh, it, it didn't it didn't surprise me that, that Draymond signed. He wanted to be here. He's we talked about it all along, and to you know to to get signed long term uh, and to make that kind of money. I I, I don't know. I, I think the biggest mistake any anybody can make in this league is to compare yourself to someone else and worry about what else somebody else is making, whether you're a coach or a player or whatever. And if you can be happy with your own circumstances, playing for a team, playing for what's already an enormous amount of money, and set up your family for life, uh, tough to argue with that. During the regular season, you and Coach, during the regular season, you and Coach Pop match Wicks in a different club line run, runs deep. Can you talk a little bit about what it's like to get back in the world? Well, it's really fun. Uh, you know, I played for him for four years, and so I competed with him. But it's a different dynamic when you're coaching together. You, you see, you see how he operates behind the scenes, not just uh, in front of the team. And, and uh, so I'm looking to learn. I mean, that's really you know, the, you know, the main thing that I wanted to get out of this was uh, you know the experience of it, which means. Enjoying the challenge, enjoying the players that are coaching, but learning, learning, becoming a better coach and learning from one of the best to ever do it, along with a, a great staff around him. And uh, I'm excited. I mean, we've only had one day of practice, but uh, I'm already writing down all kinds of stuff that, uh, that I know can, can help me and my 
coaching journey down the road. Coach, Obviously. everyone seems to be talking about the players that aren't here, but you know, focus on the players that are here. Do you opportunity something exciting to build upon and prove people wrong that no, this is not a transitional year? Yeah, I, I, I don't worry about um, who's not here. And I don't think any of us do. And I don't blame anybody. You know, this tournament goes till mid-September. It was right up to training camp. So a lot of guys, understandably, just said, you know, they, they wanted to stay away. And so what that's done is it's opened up an opportunity for all these talented young players who are already really good but have growth for, or room for more growth. And uh, so it's exciting to be part of the staff that's trying to help these players achieve that growth and to do it collectively to try to win a uh, world championship. It's exciting. Coach, how much fun is it? How refreshing is it to fly under the radar this season going into the next NBA season? The um, I'd rather be the favorite again, to be honest with you, but uh, I, like, uh, I like coaching and I like every year is a little different. This will be a lot different, uh, but I'm excited to coach the, uh, the guys who are coming back and the, the, the many young new players that we've got. Uh, it's a new challenge and I'm excited for it. Yeah, I think there's that dynamic given uh, you know, his service oh. to his country uh, and what that means to him. And then the basketball challenge being so different from coaching the Spurs. You know? um, this is so different from preparing for an NBA training camp. Uh, so knowing Pop as well as I do, I mean, he's, he's loving this. He is so uh, passionate about this project and he's so well prepared. And it's fun to, to be part of it with him and to, to see how excited he is. And, uh, to work with him and the rest of the staff. You were asked a minute ago about the guys who aren't here and how you don't blame them. Because it is yeah. a daunting schedule, yeah. obviously. It's daunting for coaches, too. If you had to change the way you structured your offseason to get ready for... When you get home, you're 10 days in the camp, too. Right. You know, so right. how, how much of a challenge to uh, yeah, I mean, that's obviously something you consider. Um, but to me, this is too good of an opportunity to pass up, you know, and... and um, I, I weighed that, uh, and to me, it wasn't really a difficult decision to be part of this and to learn and work with Pop, learn from Pop, work with him, work with the rest of the staff, take on this challenge with the group. It's exciting and uh, something I've never done before. So it's a no-brainer for me. Do you get a sense that some of this is too good of an opportunity to pass up, and that's why you're here? Yeah, yeah, and I, and I think there's a there's a common thread with all these guys. They're, they're young and they want to get better. Um, some of the guys who aren't here have already established themselves as superstar players. Some of them are, have already won an you know, Olympic gold medal. Um, these guys are basically you know, really young, talented players who are uh, trying to take the next step. So uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for them and for all of us. I know you've only been Pop's assistant for one day, but you got any advice for Tim Duncan next season? <laughs> Tim's going to run the show down there. <laughs> he's already told the rest of the staff that um, he's the only one who's not fireable on the staff. <laughs> and he's right. Pop can't fire Tim Duncan. Think about it. The rest of the guys are all expendable. So Tim's going to walk in there and basically, he probably won't even do anything. He'll probably just sit on the bench and <laughs> sip tea. Did you watch? Did it surprise you that he decided to make no, the bench? No, didn't really. Um, he loves the game. He was already in their facility and working with the young guys and playing pickup ball. And he was already doing that three or four days a week anyway. Let's do good enough uh, that Steph and Graham on half of the team and the, and the new personnel. How similar or different do you see the work we're doing next season? For Steph and Graham? Yeah. Uh, well, it's tough to tough to say before we even get on the floor, you know, sure. but I mean, I'm not not throwing them out there for 40 minutes a night, I know that. So you're, you're going to be going in on international trips here with USA across your chest. Is 
considering everything that's going on, does that have an extra weight? Uh, yeah, I, I think um, I'm, I'm proud uh, to um, represent my country and do it in a, with this group in a really positive, classy way. I watched the Women's World Cup team win the, win the, the, uh, the World Cup, and, and um, it was inspiring. And to me, that's what sports are about. The competition and the unity, and uh, bringing bringing out this great spirit and energy amongst the fans. And so I think we have a chance to do something that's very positive and unifying, and that's our goal. Have you talked to Yeah, yeah, we've talked um, a couple times, and we'll we'll connect again probably next week when we get to LA uh, with the team. And. Um, I'm excited to coach him. You know, he's a great, great young talent, and uh, I think he's going to fit right in with our group. And we're going to need him desperately. Without Clay, especially, we need D'Angelo scoring, and, and it's up to us as a staff to figure out, you know, how best to, to use him and to, to shape the team, shape the offense, and we'll figure it out. Uh, that, I, actually, I don't know. That's not my. Uh, my area. I just show up and coach who's here, so um, that's been somebody else's jurisdiction. Alright guys.